Hey there, good to see you. Uh, so today in this video, we're gonna jump over here into Photoshop because I wanna share with you a new Photoshop plugin that was recently released by Tony Kuiper. Tony Kuiper, if you don't recognize the name, he is the, uh, the mastermind behind the TK9 Luminosity Mask Photoshop plugin. A, uh, a very popular photo editing plugin. I use it a lot. I know other people do too because I see it in other people's videos here on YouTube as well. And a great plugin for luminosity masks and doing a lot of other uh, you know, like sophisticated, very nuanced photo editing. And if that is something of interest to you, I'll link to that plugin down below so you can check that out. But the plugin I wanna share with you today is a new one that is 100% free, absolutely free. You can download and install it today for macOS and Windows without paying a thing for it. And this plugin is designed for photographers who make prints. And it's a cool plugin, I think, not simply because it's free, but also because it brings some, some structure and some methodology to the process of preparing a, an image in Photoshop for print. Because as you may know, if you've created prints before, there's a number of things you kind of need to do, a number of steps you have to go through to prepare and optimize that image for creating a print. And this plugin just, you know, it just brings some structure to that process and also just makes it easier, just makes it faster. Quick disclaimer, just so you know, uh, this video is not paid for, it's not sponsored. Tony Kuiper doesn't even know I'm making this video. Uh, he has no involvement in it at all. I just downloaded it a few weeks ago and I've been using it and I thought, well, some of you may be interested in uh, checking it out as well and uh, be interested in uh, knowing about it. So let's uh, take a look at it. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop and after you install the plugin, you will see a panel that looks like this. It may just be kind of like floating out here by itself, but if it is and you wanna put it over here on in your uh, panels with the other ones, you just click and hold on the TK Print tab, drag it over here. And this is typically where I put mine. I like having it in this flyout. Uh, column here just makes it really easy to, um, to open and close. Okay, so the TK Print uh, plugin interface is a row by row, step by step uh, interface. So you begin up here with soft proof, and then you go to resize, and then sharpen, action, watermarks, etc. It's a step by step kind of thing, and we're going to go through each one of these here. But let's begin with soft proof. Okay, but we're just going to keep it simple and click on create proof copy. Now here is where you assign an ICC profile to your image, a printer and paper ICC profile. But let's just go ahead and select one here. And uh, we're going to do this one, the Hemp Canon Pro 300. That is the type of printer that I have. And again, you get these ICC profiles from the paper manufacturer. So you just download them, install them, and then they should be available in this drop down. Okay, next, uh, leave preserve RGB numbers unchecked. Typically, you don't want that. And then we have rendering intent. Now, rendering intent is a bit of a rabbit hole. We could talk, you know, for a whole video about this. But the basic, um, the, the basic function of this is that it controls how colors that are out of gamut from your printer and paper are changed so that they are in gamut. In gamut, meaning that the printer and paper can render that color, can print that color because paper typically cannot support the same range of colors that you can see on your display. So something needs to change in order f you know, to those colors, those unsupported colors, so that they can be printed. Perceptual is a little bit closer typically to what you see on your screen, whereas relative color metric is a little more precise, a little more exact. There is no right or wrong answer here. I just recommend previewing both and seeing what looks best to you. Okay, then down here we have black point compensation. Definitely recommend using this because this will raise the black point of the image to match the tonal range of the paper that you are printing on. So I'm printing on matte paper here. And as you can see, the blacks are being lifted quite a bit because this paper cannot support true black. It can't get that dark. So it has to compensate for, um, for the lift that the paper is going to apply. So it's good to check that so that uh, Photoshop will just automatically lift your shadows and blacks so that hopefully they don't get too dark and you know kind of muddy looking. Then down here we have simulate paper color. Now typically you want to uh, leave this enabled here because this will not only simulate uh, you know the black ink, simulate the tonal range, but it will also simulate the color temperature of the paper because paper obviously is uh, sometimes warm, sometimes cool, and this will change the image so that you're able to simulate how that uh, image is going to appear. Okay, so this is good enough for now. Let's just go ahead and click OK. And as you can see up here in the tab, uh, my image has been, uh, we now have a copy of the image. 
and it has the ICC profile attached to it, plus relative. Relative is the rendering intent that we talked about just a minute ago. And uh, and now we also, if you take a look up here in the layers panel, we have a soft proof group here that has some adjustment layers that have been added to it. We have hue saturation, uh, we have color balance, we have brightness contrast, and we have curves. These layers are automatically added to the image because these are adjustments that are often made before an image is printed. Because as you know, you saw just a minute ago, the image changes quite a bit. You know, from the original, this is the original image here, and then this is the proofed version here. So this is what my final image is going to look like. And I may not like, you know, the, the color temperature of the paper. I may feel like it's now a little too warm or the contrast is a little too soft or it needs a little bit of a, you know, a brightness adjustment, like whatever I need to do, I can do that here with these adjustment panels. So this is just like a nice little convenient thing that's added here uh, for you to be making some edits. Now this little arrow here just toggles uh, the soft proofing mode on and off. Then we have intent. This switches between perceptual and relative intent is just a toggle between the two. Then we have simulate paper. This is that very similar to that checkbox we saw just a minute ago. And then we have this one here, which is rather interesting. And this is called two up. And what this does is it changes the layout of your tab so that your original image is over here on the left side. And then the proofed our soft proofed image is over here on the right. Uh, when you're, you know, looking at your image and, you know, maybe you want to, you know, isolate one particular area and look at it and you want to compare it to the other one, you can just click on this match button here and it will automatically zoom uh, the other image so that it's in the exact same spot as the one that you are working on. If there's something specific that you want to compare between them. Then when you're done with two up mode, you just click tabs and you go back to your regular soft proofing view. Then we have toggle profile. That's pretty self-explanatory. That just, you know, toggles the, uh, the ICC profile on and off. We have close original. Like if we want to just, you know, clean up our workspace a little bit, we can close the, the original image that we use to create our copy from. And then we have save proof here. If, uh, if we're ready to just go ahead and, and, you know, save this image before we do anything else with it to our local hard drive. Okay. So let's say that, you know, I want to make a print of this and I know what my, what my print size is. I know what I want. I can just go to duplicate image, create a copy of my copy, uh, <laughs> and then click on flatten in order to, you know, flatten everything down. And then we have size. Now here is where you could be, you know, changing this to whatever you want. Like say, I want to print this on 13 by 17 paper. I can do that here, click okay. And now I have a resized image uh, that is appropriately sized for the paper that I want to print on. And then I can always trim it, you know, later if I want to. Now you'll also notice up here, this little play button arrow looking thing. This is an action button. Now this is provided here so that if you have an action that has already been set up as part of your print pre-production workflow, you can assign that action uh, to this button right here. And this is just like a nice convenient little place where you can click it and run the action and you're good to go. Okay, the next step down is sharpen. Now sharpening is an important step in your print pre-production workflow because typically when you make a photography print, you lose a little bit of detail, a little bit of texture, a little bit of, you know, clarity and fidelity when making a print compared to what you're seeing on your computer display because your display is a high resolution display with pixels and it's digital and paper is something else entirely. Paper is ink on paper and it just doesn't have the same, uh, the same capabilities that a monitor has. So sharpen is a way to boost some of the details in the image so that when it is printed, it actually looks normal so that the print looks more similar to what it is that you're seeing on your display. And then we have a couple of rows in here, one for matte and one for glossy. These are presets for the smart sharpen panel here, and it will pre-populate the smart sharpen panel with, you know, different settings that are appropriate you know, depending on what exactly it is that you want to sharpen. Do you want to sharpen the small, fine details in your image? Or do you want to be a little bit broader with your sharpening? Or maybe you want to go really broad uh, with it. And the reason for different values for matte and glossy is because these papers uh, just handle detail and texture differently. Glossy typically can handle it better. Uh, it can retain and display. Uh, finer detail and textures, whereas matte tends to be a little bit softer. So there are two different values here 
uh, for you to experiment with. Back to the video in just a second, but I'm quickly jumping in here to ask a favor. Uh, if this video is helpful to you, if you learned something new from this video today, uh, please take a moment and give this video a thumbs up down below. It would help me out. I would appreciate it. And by the way, if you want to do this again uh, in the future, remember to subscribe as well and click the bell notification icon so you can be notified whenever a new uh, video is uploaded. That's it. Back to the video. Okay, then the next option down is action. Now, this is just really a shortcut to your actions panel. Like if you have something in your print pre-production workflow that you would like to trigger and use at this particular step, it's not something that, that I use, but if you have something that you want to append here and, uh, and run at this, you know, at this phase of things, you can do that. Just assign it and then click this play button here and that action will run. A little bit faster than going up and digging through your actions panel. Okay, next option down is watermark logo. Again, not something that I do, but if this is something uh, that's important to you, you can click this plus sign here, select a like a, a transparent ping on your local hard drive, position it wherever you want on the image, resize it, scale it, uh, you know, apply you know a color color overlay to it, change its opacity, whatever you want to do. Uh, this is a place for you to do that if you want to put you know like a little something in the corner of your image. Okay, then the next step down is adjust clipping. Now this one is really interesting. This is like a final step in your process where you are just fine tuning some of the details to make sure that you are printing. Um, that you're going to be able to print your image successfully within the dynamic range, within the tonal range of the paper that you are printing on. So if we click on set here, you'll see that, you know, there are uh, two options here for clipping values. There are highlights and there are shadows. Perhaps to state the obvious, something to remember about paper and printing is that paper cannot print pure white. It's not like a computer display. It cannot print pure white. So it, you know, values always need to be less than white, lower than white in order for them to print. Otherwise, you're going to see the paper <laughs> in your image. Um, and that's not what you want. So you always want them to be a little bit less than um, than 255. You know, the range is zero to 255. So here we have a preset value of 235. And then we have shadows uh, with a value of 10. And so what this is going to do is set up goal posts in our image. It's going to show us where there are pixels in the image that are darker than 10 and are brighter than 235. So let's just click OK. And then we click on toggle here. And here we go. See this turquoise over here and the rock and then this little splash of uh, magenta up here at the top right. All right, so we can fix this. So I can grab this little node here and just pull up the bottom end a little bit. Now I'm probably going to need to pull up the black point as well pull that up and then you can see that the uh, that that magenta color then disappears. So any dark black pixel in the image that was lower that had a darker value than 10 is now at 10 or higher. So it should be within the tonal range of the paper. And we could do the same with this little you know this little thing up here. We can uh, just pull this you know white point down a little bit and you know get rid of that if we want to. Okay, so now the tonal range of my image is sitting in between these values or is equal to these values. The darkest pixel of the image is now equal to 10 and the brightest pixel is now equal to 235 and all of the other tones in the image are sitting in between these values. Now, something important to remember here is that these values you're looking at here, 235 and 10, these are not like fixed values, they are not like universally true for all different types of paper that are out there. Glossy paper can print deeper, darker blacks than matte. Uh, metallic, even further than that. Uh, some paper is also just inherently brighter than other papers. So the tonal scale, um, you know, that you're working with here with your paper is, you know, going to be, you know, it, this is not a very you know, scientific thing, in other words. Like, you know, if you're printing on glossy paper, you may want to set this to something like five for your shadows and maybe like, I don't know, like 250 for your highlights, something like that. It's not particularly exact. And I think it might be nice if there was some kind of drop down or something in this modal window here, like something where you could either choose a preset 
um, you know, preset values for different paper types or maybe create your own and save them. I feel like there's a lot more that, that could be done here in order to make this more precise. But at least, you know, at the time of this video and at the time that I'm reviewing it, uh, you enter these values, you know, you just type them in yourself. Anyway, so that's what adjust clipping is all about and, um, and it works pretty well. All right, so the next step is print. This is where we actually make the print. If you click on print, that just opens up the, you know, the uh, Photoshop print dialog. Personally, I don't use that. I use Canon uh, professional uh, print and layout software, so that's not really for me. Uh, flatten, this will just flatten all the layers in your panel. Save image, here's another option to save your image locally to your hard drive if you're done with it. You can also close it. You can close all the documents that are currently open. And then we have this option here, which is interesting. This is something that I've actually talked about in previous videos when talking about luminosity masks in Photoshop. This is a convenient way to fix dark images. And let me show you what happens when we click it. So click on too dark and take a look at our uh, layers palette here. You see up here at the top, this is a luminosity mask over here. And the white area shows uh, the areas that are selected and the black areas are areas that are deselected. So what it is doing is selecting the uh, the darkest tones in the image. It is applying a linear a linear curve, and it is applying a screen blend mode with a opacity value of 50. And what this is doing is just lifting all of the blacks, all of those dark tones in the image, but without affecting the midtones, without affecting uh, the highlights. It's not having too much an effect on anything else. It's just a nice, easy way just to give a little bit of a boost to those lower tonal values in your image prior to printing, because again, your print may turn out a little bit darker than you expect it to, because you're not looking at a screen, you're looking at a piece of paper. So this is a nice little option here. And obviously you can go into the, you know, the layers panel here and make some, you know, do some fine tuning again, if you want to. But that's a nice little option to throw on there if you need it. So that's the end of it. Uh, at this point, you should be done with the image and then you can, if you want to, you can flatten it, you can save it to your local hard drive, close it out. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's about it. As I mentioned earlier, TK Print is a free download, a free plugin for Photoshop, and you will find a link to it down below in the video description. If this is a topic of interest to you, which I assume it is because you made it you know, this far in the video, I uh, recommend checking out these videos here. I think uh, I think these will be of interest to you. Thanks so much for being here, everyone, as usual, and uh, I will see you next time.